The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, heal yourself. And say, do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen. I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing as we ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit during the sermon. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator, bless, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, you may be seated. <laughs> One thing is for certain, we come out well with our family in photos. You all are my family, each and every one of you. I am not married. I am married to the church, which is to all of you. And I have to keep reminding myself that it's in good times and in bad times. <laughs> for better, for worse. <laughs> in sickness and in health. Uh, about 10 people told me they were going to help put in the floor. I had their phone number. I texted with them the new floor that we have in the church. Look around, okay? That we're putting in in the church. 10 people told me. They were going to come and help put it in. We bought all the materials. And they had my number. I texted with them. Come Monday morning, two people show up. <gasps> hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> That's how it is. Huh? That's how it is in this life. So what did I have to do? Because, you know, there was glue here galore. Absolute glue. By Wednesday... We didn't know what to do, so I had to hire a company uh -huh. with money that I do not have. 
Mm -hmm. But I'm not worried about it because I know there's money out here. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is it's in your pockets. But, you know. <laughs> so $7,000 later, oh. this is, yeah, it's a company that's doing it. So we're not going to be doing the haul because obviously, you know, this is, Sometimes, let me put it to you this way. Uh, cheap will cost, well, doing it cheap, the cheap way will end up costing you more. <laughs> I should have hired a company in the very beginning and not relied on, oh, Father, we will come and help you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, but um, such, is, uh, such is life. Uh, live and learn. But you know, this takes me to the readings for this Sunday. It was Jesus' family, his own folks, who didn't want him. They are the ones who wanted to stone him, throw rocks at him. It was his own people. You know, and Jesus walked with the twelve. The twelve is, of course, a symbol of the church the 12 apostles, like the 12 tribes of Israel. And did he come out well with them? Nope. No. They all abandoned him on the road of the cross. He walked alone that lonesome valley. Not one of them was with him. Peter betrayed him. Judas Iscariot sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Huh? You know, Corinne, there's your B. <laughs> She's got a phobia. <laughs> she don't want to be bit in the... I um, don't I was almost said a word. No. She don't want to be bit in the... Um, how do you say that? Stung in the behind. <laughs> I guess this is how it is. You know, there's things all the time in our life. What an illustration of the sermon. But today we had the second reading from 1 Corinthians 12 about love. You know, that love never fails us. <laughs> Be careful. Well, you can sit outside. <laughs> <sighs> okay, let me get through this sermon, okay, that I have prepared for all of you. Uh, <clears throat> love never fails, and we need love. It's the one medicine, it's the best medicine in our life. We all need love in our life in order to be well in this life. Hmm? We need love. When I was first ordained a priest, May 22nd, May 22nd, <laughs> 2010, uh, right after I began to live with a priest from Ireland, and we lived in a town, in a very small town, uh, in a house that was very old, about a hundred and uh, 20 years old was the house and so you could hear everything in the um, in the house you could hear absolutely everything all the noises and he didn't want to get hearing aids so he would stay up all night watching TV and crank up the the television all the way up and then he used to eat beans from a can and the walls were very thin so I could hear the farts you know, I could hear it all okay and then while I was living with him all I wanted was to move out I want to live by myself I want my own parish well you know God has a sense of humor I got my wish I got sent to the most remotest town you could ever imagine Crescent City California, 
And if you don't know much about it, you can Google it, or you can ask Catherine here, who is visiting uh, from uh, Crescent City. Um, it is very remote. And I was living by myself, and let me tell you, there were many days where all I dreamed about or wished for were those noises. <laughs> Just to know that he was here, that he was there, how I missed him and his company. Uh -huh. There is a saying that says, it's better to be alone than to be in bad company. People repeat that all the time. I'd rather be by myself than be in bad company. How stupid. It's better to be in bad company than to be alone. Or is your husband always good company? I'm speaking. <laughs> Is your wife always good company? Are your kids always good company? Are your brothers and sisters always good company? Huh? No! But yet, if there's anything we have learned over the last two years, is it's better to be in bad company than to be alone. Hmm? What would you be without your not always good company? Hmm? And this I have to remind myself this week. When these people, 10 people that I know, failed me miserably. Hmm? People in your life fail you and often miserably as well. And I have to remind myself, what would I be without all of these people? I couldn't be a priest without all of you. And you think I like everybody here? <laughs> the good thing is, is all of you think I like you. That's great. <laughs> But you have to you have to remember you know there this is just one mass uh, of many and there is uh, uh, lots and lots of people who come and believe me not everybody irks me the right way <laughs> and yet I put up with everybody every single person and that if there's anything to learn it's just like that Jesus put up with the twelve why because he didn't want to walk alone. He did not want to walk alone. Huh? One of the reasons why Catherine and John are here, and they're right, right there, okay, is because we've been meeting about um, their marriage, about them getting married. And I've been giving them some instructions uh, on, you know, on how to be married. And I know a lot of you are going to say, well, what do you know? <laughs> you don't have to bite the donut to know it's sweet. <laughs> okay? You don't go to the cardiologist to treat you for a heart attack because he had a heart attack. Yeah, that's true. Huh? That's true. Yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot about marriage by listening to people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've gone through the married experience with my grandparents, my own parents. So I know. And I can give you a lot of advice. A lot of advice. Some of which I'm going to give you this morning. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, I will never forget when my grandfather was dying of colon cancer, and all sorts of people would come in and touch him and try to comfort him. And they couldn't give him any more morphine. Or it would kill him. 
uh, stop because that's very distracting. Okay, if you don't want to be, just stay, go, you know. It's on the head. Just take a thing and, and what? yeah, it's very, I won't be able to finish if everybody's, you know, paying attention to the beat. Okay. Just to, <laughs> yeah, catch the bee and take it outside. Okay. Okay, you know, this is, a, this is, do you know that Beelzebul, one of the names for the devil in the, uh, in the Bible, is, uh, say that in English. Yeah, they, you got it. Beelzebul. Satan. Yeah, but what is it, in, what, Satan. what is it, you, hold on just a minute. Satan. Satan, right, yes. but what? You know about Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. Lord of the flies. Lord of the flies. Yeah. He's the Lord of the Flies. So Beelzebul. Lord of the Flies, because he wants to distract you. So this is precisely what he's trying to do right now, to distract all of you, so that you don't pay attention to what I have prepared for you. Let's start over. From where I am. <laughs> I will never forget <laughs> when my grandfather was dying of colon cancer and all sorts of people would come in and touch him and try to comfort him. They couldn't give him any more morphine or it would kill him. He was agonizing. My grandma would come into the room and grab his hand and caress his face with her hand and kiss him and envelop herself into him and place her cheeks against his and that would calm him down. He would fall asleep. Nobody had that power. Only her. Because he knew that she loved him. He felt it. The best morphine, the best medicine, love. She was the one who, when he would come home all drunk and vomited from his drunken parties, she would send us upstairs saying, your grandfather is sick. And she would sit with him, never saying one bad word about him to us or anyone else. He felt that acceptance, that unconditional want and love. He knew that I have somebody that wants me as I am accepts me as I am. I will never forget her whispering to him as he lay dying, agonizing of cancer. She would whisper into his ear, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. That's what the Bible tells us. God says, be still and know that I am here. He's trying to whisper that to you right now in the midst of what you are going through here in your own life. Be still and know that I am here. Calm down. Whatever cancer you are going through in your life. Whatever agonizing situation. I am here, says the Lord.
That's how the devil attacks us, making us feel that we have nobody, that nobody wants you. The one time that the devil attacked me, one of the times, but this is the most powerful one that has always stuck in my head, is when I was visiting a person in the hospital and they were in a coma and I was the only one there to anoint the person and they were in a coma. And all of a sudden, they opened their eyes. It was a lady. And she started spewing at me. You're a nobody. You're a priest. You're not married. No one wants you. No one wants to touch you. And all I remembered was the words of my mother who would say to me when I weighed 325 pounds, no one will ever want you or will ever get married to you. No one will ever marry you. You will never get married. Look at the way you look. The devil plays the cassette all the time. Why do you think that I promote the holy exercised water Blessed and exercised. Exorcism means to get rid of anything that isn't of God. Because when that woman opened her mouth to attack me, obviously the devil spoke through her. I used my holy exercised water and that was the only thing that shut her up. This is one of the experiences. The devil wants to attack you by letting you know that no one will ever want to put up with you unconditionally. That your life doesn't mean anything. Hmm? You know, there's no way to experience love by yourself. That's why you cannot be alone. Adam lived in heaven, in paradise, in the presence of God. And yet, he needed Eve. He was unfulfilled until she showed up. This is at last bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You cannot be by yourself. No one enters heaven alone. Put that on your refrigerator. The next time somebody irks you that you share your life with. I cannot enter heaven alone. I need him. I need her. You can only enter heaven that is eternal bliss. Eternal bliss with another. Two by two. Jesus sent out the disciples one by one. Two by two. Not one by one. Can't walk alone. We know this very well. We all need someone in our life to walk with in a very special way. A lot of religious people are shocked. You know, the, the holy rollers in the Catholic Church are shocked. That's why you don't hear anything about it, but you can Google all of this. The Holy Rollers uh, in the Catholic Church, 
don't want to face facts. But we know even from the life of St. John Paul II, the Polish Pope. You all heard of him? St. John Paul II, but you may not have heard of Anna Maria Tymieniecka. How many heard of Anna Maria Tymieniecka? Raise your hand. She's a Polish philosopher. Well, you have it. Well, you can Google her. <laughs> when John Paul II was dying in 2005, there was only one person he wanted at his bedside. Anna Maria Tymieniecka. He only wanted her. And we know this because after she died, her family released the love letters that they were exchanging with one another for decades. They fell in love. Both of them were very close to each other. And he only wanted her to be there. He wanted her touch. John Paul II, the Pope. She was the only one who was able to calm him down, the reports say about his last hours. This is a, the Pope. Now you understand why he was such a good Pope. Now all the holy people, you know, they're like, oh, we should take the sainthood away, away from him. That's what they're saying right now because of what was revealed. They want to strip him of his sainthood. You know what? He's more of a saint than any of them will ever be in my book. And this doesn't make him a worse human being or a worse pope. In fact, it made him human. Even the pope fell in love and had that other love. It's normal and natural. That's why the Bible says, a bishop shall be the husband of one wife. Right, we don't like to talk about that. No. See, because it's not about sex, okay? This is where everybody's gonna go now. Oh, did the Pope do it? You know, and all of that, okay? <laughs> what is wrong with all of you? What, you know, what the hell, why? Why is that important? You know, he fell in love. That's what we know. She doesn't describe anything else in the letters. She didn't, I mean, it's about intimacy. You know, you all know that in time as married couples, you don't want sex, I heard, okay? <laughs> It's like, you know, once in the blue moon, I guess. That's what people tell me, okay? <laughs> this is why in the rule of St. Benedict, monks and nuns could not live by themselves. They were to do everything together. Everything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there, you know, there has to be genital contact that people have with each other, but they ha we need intimacy in our life. We all need one another. It's about love. To feel loved. People today are in the hookup culture. Hooking up for sex but they really don't want sex. Hmm? They want touch. Because if sex made people happy, prostitutes would be the happiest people on earth. <laughs> there is a reason why this a natural rule of mandatory celibacy has caused so much problems in the church. The killing of the natural births the unnatural, hence why so many <clears throat> priests got into horrible, devoid behaviors. 
when you have something that is, you know, you have to do it. I bring all of this up with all of you to make you realize how blessed you are to have the people in your life and that you cannot walk alone and to thank God for the people in your life, all of them, and that it's truly better to be in bad company than to be alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you get something out of this sermon? Yes. Yes. Yeah? Good. Okay, see? I don't have to be married to give you advice. <laughs> it's the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have that invocation of the Holy Ghost before I preach. Because it's the Lord who takes over me at this time in order to bring you what you need to fill your soul with that food as we stand and we profess our faith. I believe, I believe in one God. God.